the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have redeemed the world. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we stand before the cross, the cross on which our dear Lord hung to redeem humankind. As we meditate on the way of his passion and journey through the stations, let us remember that it was for us that our Lord was crucified. May it help us to be truly sorry for the times when we have failed him and strengthen us to take up our cross and follow him all of our days. Lord Jesus, you came from the Father to redeem us. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you showed your love for us on the cross. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, give us your strength to take up our cross and follow you. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We come to our first station. Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have redeemed the world. As they were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And on the third day, he will be raised. And they were greatly distressed. Pilate could find no fault in Jesus, but he handed him over to the people, a weak ruler swayed by a violent crowd. It made little difference to Pilate whether one Jew lived or died, and it enabled him to obtain from the crowd the useful affirmation that they had no king but Caesar. And so Pilate handed him over to them. We may like to think that we would not take part of this crowd. And yet, in each one of us is the voice which cried, Crucify him. For every time we fail Jesus, we join our voice with those of the angry crowd. Lord Jesus, we have sinned against you and crucified you. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have mercy on us and forgive us. Christ, 
have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to be the people you have called us to be. Lord, have mercy. We come to our second station. Jesus carries his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have redeemed the world. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put upon him a scarlet robe. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on his head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. The procession to the execution began. And Jesus, though weak from continuous questioning, mocking and beating, was made to carry his own cross. He was led away as a common criminal to suffer one of the most dreading and degrading forms of execution ever invented. But the burden that Jesus had to carry was much greater than the physical weight of the cross, for he also had to carry the sins of us all. Let us offer our sorrow for the times when we have added to this burden. Lord Jesus, we are sorry for the times when we have failed you. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we are sorry for the times we have rejected you. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us not to fail you any more. Lord, have mercy. We come to our third station. Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have redeemed the world. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his strips we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. In his anguish he prayed even more earnestly, and his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. Weakened by the unbearable torments that he had already honed through. The added weight of the cross was too much for Jesus, and he fell. As he lay there, the cry of anguish that he was, would later utter cannot have been far from his lips. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We sometimes feel alone, that God has forsaken us and does not answer our prayers. But we, like Jesus, must know in our hearts that however far away God seems to be, he never forsakes us. He is always faithful. Lord Jesus, even you once felt forsaken by the Father. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are always faithful and loving. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to know that you are always with us. Lord, have mercy. We come now to our fourth station. Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have redeemed the world. Simon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is spoken against, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that thoughts out of many hearts will be revealed. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. Mary had brought up her son through many hardships and cared for him as a loving mother. Now she saw him being led to his death, a little over 30 years of age. Was this really what he had meant when he said, Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Certainly this was the sword that Simeon had predicted would pierce her soul. But Mary, unlike most of the disciples, did not desert her son in the time of need, but stood by him to the very end. Let us ask that we too may have a faith like Mary, to stand by Jesus whatever the cost. Lord Jesus, we often lack faith in you. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we often fail to trust in you. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to love you as Mary did. Lord, have mercy. We arrive at our fifth station. Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus to carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have redeemed the world. As they went out, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. This man they compelled to carry his cross. Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Jesus was so weak that the soldiers were afraid that he may not reach the place of execution. So they forced a passerby to carry his cross. Simon, no doubt, tried to refuse, but in the end, he did carry the cross. Only the day before, the disciples had insisted that they would remain faithful to Jesus, whatever happened. But first, they fell asleep in the garden, and then, after the arrest, they ran away. How like the parable that Jesus had told where it was the unwilling son who in fact did what his father wanted. Words and empty promises are not enough. We, like Simon, must take up our cross and share in Christ's passion in our daily lives. Lord Jesus, you carried your cross for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we are weak and often fail you. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to take up our cross and follow you. Lord, have mercy. 
We come now to our sixth station. Veronica wipes Jesus' face. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have redeemed the world. You have said, seek my face, my heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Cast me not off, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. In a great act of kindness, a woman stepped forward from the crowd and wiped the blood-stained face of Jesus. A few days earlier, another woman had anointed Jesus with costly perfume. A few hours later, a man would give Jesus his tomb. All of these acts were of love and charity to the Lord. And we can perform similar acts of charity to Jesus living now in our brother, brothers and sisters in need. For whatever we do to help one another, we do it for Jesus, our Lord and our God. Lord Jesus, you care for all your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you ask us to love one another as you have loved us. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to see you living in others. Lord, have mercy. We come now to our seventh station. Jesus falls for the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have redeemed the world. I am the one who has seen affliction under the rod of his wrath. He has driven and brought me into the darkness without any light. He has blocked my way with hewn stones. He has made my paths crooked. He has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in ashes. A little further along the road, Jesus stumbled and fell again. He must have felt so utterly exhausted and desolate that he could not possibly go any further. But he had to go on to fulfil his father's will, and so again he struggled to his feet and carried on. Sometimes we too feel things are hopeless. We cannot go on, but we too have God's work to do. And we too must continue with trust and faith in the power of Jesus working in us. Lord Jesus, you perfectly fulfilled the will of your Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to live our lives in your service. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us not to give up. Lord, have mercy. We come now to our eighth station. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have redeemed the world. Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never gave suck. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen 
when it is dry. Many devout women from Jerusalem began to weep for Jesus and tried to console him. But he told them not to weep for him, but for themselves and for their children. Jesus was in agony, and yet he refused their consolation, not through ingratitude, but because he knew the agony that they and others would suffer because of their rejection of him. When we feel rejected or badly treated, we must remember this example of Jesus. We must still remember others who are suffering perhaps more than we are and who are in need of our help and compassion and not let ourselves become caught up in self-pity. Lord Jesus, you came to serve, not to be served. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, in your compassion, you come to us in our need. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to show love and compassion to others. Lord, have mercy. We come now to our ninth station. Jesus falls for the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have redeemed the world. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust. There may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. No sin is too great for Jesus to forgive, so long as we are truly sorry and are prepared to rely on his love and forgiveness rather than our own efforts. Even after this third and heaviest fall, Jesus once again struggled to his feet and continued. And so must we. Even in the moment of our greatest fall, we must not lose hope, but get up and continue with faith in our Lord's merciful love. Lord Jesus, you love us whatever we do. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us whenever we fail you. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to rely on you. Lord, have mercy. We come now to our tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his clothing. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have redeemed the world. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mingled with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divide his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him. The journey was over. They had arrived at last to the place of execution. First, they stripped Jesus of his clothing, and so he ended his life as he had begun it, with nothing. We have many comforts which we rightly enjoy, but we must not become so involved with the th things of this world that we lose sight of what really matters. We must keep our sights firmly fixed on God 
and be ready to accept whatever comes to us in his name. Lord Jesus, you have given us everything we have. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have your whole life for us. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to give our lives in your service. Lord, have mercy. We come now to our 11th station. Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have redeemed the world. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then, Two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right hand and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, ragging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others. But he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe him. Jesus stretched out his arms on the cross in a gesture of forgiveness for the whole world. Before he died, he had time for two further particular acts for forgiveness. First, he forgave his executioners, even as they hammered in the nails. And then he forgave the penitent thief who was crucified with him. Just as Jesus forgave them, so he always forgives us when we sin. And so also we must forgive them that trespass against us, as the Lord's Prayer tells us. Lord Jesus, you came to bring reconciliation to humankind. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are always ready to forgive us. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to forgive others as you forgive us. Lord, have mercy. We come now to our twelfth station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have redeemed the world. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the same of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried aloud again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, This was truly the Son of God. Jesus hung on the cross for only a short time. The mental and physical torments he had suffered had taken all his strength. He commended his spirit to his father and died. It was all over. But of course, it was not all over. It was only the beginning. Christ had to die so that he 
would live. As the soldiers pierced his side, out flowed the blood and water that was to seal the new and everlasting covenant between God and the world. Lord Jesus, you are the living bread which has come down from heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the blood of everlasting covenant. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, nourish us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. We come now to our 13th station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have redeemed the world. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly this was the Son of God. There were also many women there looking on from afar who had also followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Jesus hung dead on the cross, and so now did the two thieves. The crowds had gone home. The soldiers had left. Silence descended upon the whole of Calvary. The body of Jesus was taken down from the cross and laid in Mary's arms. Now she carries her son's lifeless body in her arms, as once she carried his unborn body in the womb. For this death was the prelude to new life. Lord Jesus, your death brought life to the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our life and our hope. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, raise us up to new life in you. Lord, have mercy. We come now to our final station. Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have redeemed the world. Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and departed. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the sepulchre. The body of Jesus was placed in the tomb, but not even the power of death could hold him. Christ had to die and be buried before he could rise again. In the same way, we too have to die and be buried with Christ in the waters of baptism so that we too can rise again to new life with him. Let us then try to live that risen life here on earth, so that when our time comes to die, we may pass through the gates of death to new and everlasting life with Jesus, where pain and suffering will be no more. Lord Jesus, you give us new birth in the waters of baptism. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you wash us clean in your blood. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, lead us through death to eternal life with you. Lord, have mercy. We have meditated on Christ's journey from condemnation in Pilate's palace to death on a cross 
and burial in a stranger's tomb. We have considered what it means for us. We have expressed sorrow for our sins, and we have promised to live a life closer to Christ. Now, we must join those first disciples in their watch on the first Holy Saturday, as they wait with anticipation to see what the future holds for them. They waited in desolation and fear, but we wait in expectation and hope, confident in the resurrection for which we recall and celebrate on Easter Day. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have redeemed the world. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 